Hello, Internet. Um, dude, I always start with um. Yeah, because I have no thoughts. My brain is empty. If I shake my head real hard, it sounds like a paint can. So, getting, I'm going to do an update on where the, uh, the new, the current, the new, current, whatever, garden tractor uh, progress is. Ran into a few things. Uh, this one is definitely in worse shape than the one I did last year. Which again, is really funny because the one I did last year was the one out of the three. The guy was like, yeah, this one is straight up for parts. It died. I left it sit. Blah, blah, blah. The other two are good working units. Just, you know, haven't been running a couple of years. And they appeared to be that way. You know, both of them cranked with batteries. And you can tell the carburetors were just in the fuel. You know, it was just nasty. Anyway, um, this one is not in as good a shape. So TLDR, basically, picked up three of these things last year, started going through them, turned one into a mower. Uh, two of them are old GT50 Craftsman's. The other one is a few model years newer, GT6000. Um, I'm working currently on the second GT50. So the first GT50 is done. The second one I'm working on, 6000 I haven't touched. Um, well, my kid took parts. Doesn't matter. Between two fifties, uh, I managed to salvage one fit good or at least better and repairable 50 inch deck. Obviously it's the mower. Uh, and then I field stripped the other deck, which was just foobard for extra bits and pieces. Had a couple good spindles, yada yada. Uh, so on this one, since it's not gonna have a deck and it's not gonna have a PTO drive, I was thinking about taking the PTO off. Uh, and I did take it off the engine but I don't really feel like building a bear, building a spacer to get the drive belt back in place because the uh, shaft on the engine is super long when you take PTO off. But let's see what we got here. Um, okay, so first thing I ran into is this is the electric PTO off of it. Uh, it had been mangled and disgusting lead before. Uh, probably lost a belt and it just ate itself um this was the wire that was on it so you can tell the quality of repair work that had been put into it uh it's old it's gnarly um it didn't have the uh body springs clutch springs in it i don't know if you can tell so much in the camera but it, it's bent these are still readily available um pretty common about a hundred bucks 120 bucks online i don't think i'm going to buy one this season i will buy one uh but since it's not useful i'm not going to buy it now and i hope you can hear that quality bearing through there let's try this one more time <sighs> guys mowers tractors, cars, stuff's got to get replaced sometimes. You got to keep maintenance up. So in finding that, I found this belt keeper was mangled. Um, and I took a wire wheel to it, mostly just to get all the gunk and grime off. And it stripped the paint so well, I just field stripped it. It took about five minutes. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, good. So I welded this. I Bent it all up, welded the stud back in place. This was cracked, and I put a little weld on this side too. Uh, this thing was cracked all the way down into uh, like here, from up here all the way down. The, the keeper stud was bent at goofy, you know, it was supposed to be, wow, supposed to be straight up and down, and it's, it's like this. This guy was bent all wonkety. This guy was bent all wonkety. And the bracket itself was bent. So I straightened it out and everything as best I could. Uh, according to the parts breakdown, there is a bushing that goes here. I don't know if you can tell, but it's recessed. It dips down. There's a bushing that goes here. And then it goes up to the frame plate or the engine plate. I don't know what it's called. But it's it connects the two... I'm pointing and nobody can see. So it connects it connects the two frame rails and allows the rear of the engine to sit on it. 
it didn't have one of the two bolts in it. Um, the bushing's gone, so I'll have to figure that out. That should be easy. I should be able to just, like, it's it's a steel bushing. I should be able to just stack washers or something. You know, maybe I'll find one at the hardware store. They sell uh, bronze and steel bushings. Um, so we're there. This body had a crack in it, just like the old one. Uh, right through here, it was broken into, like, four pieces. Had a big big Y this way. So you had this piece, this piece, this piece, and then down here it was broken again, so there was a fourth piece. On the one I did last year, I built a reinforcement plate on the back side. Now, the plan is just to get this up and running for this year for use here in the next month or two. And then hopefully next year, maybe around the same time before uh, usage season comes in, I'll be able to bring it in, field strip it, as I want to put a reinforcement plate here too, this is where the seat comes in. I did that as well on the other one because the other one was cracked. And I want to paint. Yeah, you know, I want to do it. I'm not going to paint it orange like that, like that one is, but I do want to paint it. So I think we're, I think we're in a good spot with this bracket, with that body. I'm going to shoot some, uh, shoot some spray bomb on it here in a couple minutes. Handy dandy carburetor came in, so I got to get that guy running. Uh, on this one, we have new fuel grommet and in nipple. I have pre-cut my stainless steel quarter inch line, uh, to be bent and formed to go on here. I have removed all the old fuel system. New carburetor is installed. Uh, new crank breather is installed. New fuel pumps installed. The poor man's power steering is completely and totally complete, but I do have to, these cheap uh, Chinese replacements, I have a problem keeping them on, so I usually put some uh, stainless steel mechanics wire around them, and this one popped free. It slid down on, the, on it. Usually, they hold themselves in place. Can I get it in the camera? They hold themselves in place pretty well, but maybe I didn't get, I probably just didn't get the wire tight enough on that one uh we have new pto switch because it needs that to kind of run i have deleted the deck height handle and the bracketry from underneath i found this little bushing at the hardware store and filed it down this is a it's a punched hole so it's mildly tapered it's uh uh, it measures out to like 40 millimeter, and I think across the threads on this, it measured to like 44, so I just filed it down until it until it fit pretty snug. Uh, it can't go into the frame this way because of the nut flange, and then this is screwed with some blue Loctite uh, directly into, into the crossbar pivot rod thing, so it can't, it can't come out, it can't go in. We're good. Uh, in true Southern Ohio fashion, uh, since the muffler was gone and it's expensive and unobtainium, we did a performance muffler delete on here. Uh, it still has the primary down there. I, I don't know. You can't see it. It's dark. Uh, but it still has the primary one. This is a piece of inch and a half. Uh, it's a 90 degree cut and shaped and basically... It just kind of catches uh, catches the exhaust that comes out of the primary muffler. And unfortunately, on the primary muffler, when it comes out, it comes out at an angle towards the front. On uh, so I notched the pipe. I cut the pipe down. I notched it so that it fit reasonably where I wanted it. Uh, and it basically will just blow in there and and then out. It it is. Again, uh, yeah, there's no light. I don't have a flashlight with me. It's it's not attached, attached. It's just kind of there to catch most of it and redirect it. Uh, nice, fancy flexi pipe. That should hold it reasonably well right here. And then what I'll do when the body gets back on, I will take, because there is a body bolt that comes in and attaches the lower part of the body to the fender here. And I think what I'm going to do is come down and just... Ugh. Sorry, it's early and I got stuff to do, so I'm kind of in a rush. Put a clamp here, 
attach another little piece of steel through this body bolt and into one of the clamp bolts and that'll keep that right there i have a nice little side exit down here um it'll be in front of the tire so it shouldn't interfere with any of that i still got to do all the fluids and filters on this uh, and i still got to do the steering on it uh, new tires for the front are mounted and you know that part of the steering upgrade is you put bearings in and i still got to get the sleeve hitch on uh but those are going to be for another day my kids using it as a workbench those are going to be for another day uh we we got family stuff to do today get out do a little bit get it done give everybody a quick update uh hopefully you all go out do something cool have some fun and uh you know if it's too much work i don't know i don't know i was trying to come up with a cool catch line i don't think i want to be that guy go out and have fun that's it bye